Hello and welcome blockchain enthusiasts. My name is Stanislav Sava and today we will be diving into creating your very own React Native wallet for the Multiverse X blockchain. In this workshop you will get hands-on experience in setting up a basic wallet that interacts seamlessly with the Multiverse X blockchain. By the end of this session, you'll have both a foundation and a functioning wallet upon which you can build the next big thing in the Multiverse X landscape. But first, a little bit of history. So in 2015, Facebook recognized a pressing need in the mobile app development sphere. The demand for a cross-platform solution that didn't compromise on native app performance. Their answer was React Native. Unlike other platforms that uh, merely rendered web views in a native shell, React Native provided a unique value proposition. It allowed developers to write in JavaScript, a language many were already familiar with, while simultaneously offering a near native. The beauty of it was one code base could now cater to both iOS and Android, a true game changer for the mobile app development industry. React Native didn't just stop at cross-platform compatibility. Its design philosophy for the developers, the flexibility to integrate native modules, ensuring platform-specific functionalities were lost. And for the developer, the experience was enhanced with features like hot reloading, which instantly reflects changes, saving precious development time. Not if technology thrives without a strong community behind it, just like Multiverse X. React Native's community is also a force to be reckoned with, constantly churning out libraries and plugins that enhance its ecosystem. Major flat platforms like Instagram, Uberfoods, Skype saw the potential and hopped on board, further cementing its industry trust. One of its standout features is that it provides users with authentic UI feel thanks to the usage of native components. And as for the future of React Native, with its regular updates and a commu committed community, it's well poised to remain at the forefront of mobile app development. As we've discussed the origin and performance advantages of React Native, it's crucial to understand its relevance in today's blockchain ecosystem, especially with rapidly emerging platforms. The Multiverse X blockchain, known for its scalability and efficiency, requires robust and versatile development tools to unleash its full potential. React Native, with its cross-platform capabilities, is an excellent fit for building decentralized apps on the Multiverse X blockchain, ensuring the users across different devices experience seamless and efficient interactions. In a world where blockchain is revolutionizing the way we transact and interact, the synergy between React Native and Multiverse X highlights the importance of having the right tools for the right job. So before diving deep, let's clarify some foundational concepts. A React Native wallet, in essence, is a software interface that interacts with a blockchain, in our case, Multiverse X. It enables a user to import his wallet or create a new one and execute transactions on the blockchain. It also allows users to perform various tasks, including checking balances, viewing transaction histories, and transferring funds. The wallet we've created can execute only basic transactions, but it can be easily extended to execute smart contract calls, sign messages, read more complex blockchain data, and so forth. So important terms to remember before we start is a public key, which is your wallet's address, private key, which is your secret password, and seed phrase, a recovery phrase to restore your wallet. It's very important that you never sh share the seed phrase as whoever has this phrase has direct access to your wallet. So do keep it safe. Uh, if you want to imagine some examples of where you could use this wallet, maybe it could inspire you to build something, is imagine Sarah, a digital artist who wants to sell her NFTs, who wants to sell her art in forms of NFTs on the multiverse blockchains, uh, the way many uh, users already do. So she uses an extended version of our React Native wallet to manage her earning, check her sale history, and even purchase other NFTs 
but list them for sale. Similarly, think of Alex, who is a trader, and he keeps track of all his assets and trades directly in the wallet. Um, these are just some glimpses or idea of where you can extend this wallet. Start with the basic, with the foundation, and you can just go in any of this direction. All right, so it's time to roll up our sleeves and start with um, the actual app. But first of all, you have to ensure that you have the proper development environment set up. So you will need Node.js installed, um, a package manager like Yarn or NPM, whichever you prefer, React Native CLI and Xcode or Android Studio. Again, whichever you prefer. We'll be using Yarn for this demo, but if you're an NPM fan, you can just replace all Yarn commands with NPM installed and it should be just fine. Um, after you've installed Xcode or Android Studio, you need to create a simulator or an emulator uh, device to run the app, or you can just connect your physical device and set it up for development. I won't delve too much into how to do that, but you can find plenty of information uh, online. Right, so once you have all of this installed, you need to clone the project locally and run Yarn or NPM install, which will install your JavaScript packages. And after you've installed them, you can go. You should go into the iOS uh, folder if you're developing on iOS, as we do for the demo, and route pod install. This will install all the native packages with Cocoa Pods. And after the operation is complete, go ahead and run Yarn iOS and this will start your app for development. You can also start the build process directly from Xcode or Android Studio, uh, but this is the faster way to do it from the command line. A note for iOS development though, uh, if you run the app on a simulator, you can just run it. However, if you want to run it on a physical device, you need to configure Xcode a bit. You'll need to change the bundle identifier to something unique, also, you need to add a team signature with a personal account. Um, this can be done easily from Xcode, should be in complex. Right, so you can just open up another terminal and run yarn start. This will start your JavaScript bundle, which is a server that builds the JavaScript code, watches your file, and reacts instantly um, to any changes that you made by rebuilding all the parts that were affected by the change, the hot reloaded reloading I mentioned earlier. So if your app starts normally and you see this login screen, um, you are good to go. Congratulations, you have your own uh, React Native wallet that runs on the Multiverse 6 blockchain. However, if you encounter any problems along the way, do contact us and we will help you solve the problem quickly so you can get started on your journey as soon as possible. Okay, so let's walk through the app a bit so you know what you have before you start changing and adapting it to your idea that will win this competition. All right, so we have the login screen. This is where the user can actually land on the app and can either import the wallets if they have already them or create a new one. Um, I'll just add some mock words I set up so I don't uh, type them in now, and the this is the seed phrase I talked about earlier. So this is actually something you should be should keep secret. Don't expose it in a video like I did. Fortunately, this is a seed phrase for the uh, DevNet uh, wallet, so uh, nothing nothing uh, can be stolen from this. Um, so let's go ahead and import it. This uh, will save the seed phrase natively. I'll get to that later. And after the user imports or creates the wallet, they will land on the wallet screen. Uh, this is some basic info, your address, your balance on the blockchain, and the last 10 transactions that this wallet executed. Right, so from here, we can just go to the Ascent Crypto screen and we can try and um, generate a transaction that we can send to someone. Um, the user has to enter a recipient address, which is also a public key from someone who has to receive the funds, the amount of the funds, and some data. Let's do a test, the classic one. Um, all right, so 
After filling the details, the transaction will be signed with the user private key in a secure way and will be sent to the blockchain with the signature attached to the body, which will confirm that the transaction is initiated by someone who actually has the private key to this wallet. The basic idea behind this is this. Wallet is composed of a public key and a private key that have a mathematical relationship between them. The public key is the wallet's address and it can be actually used to verify via a signature that someone who initiates a transaction actually has the private key associated to the public key, thus confirming that the transaction in someone's name was actually initiated by that someone. Right, let's go ahead and send a transaction to the blockchain so that it gets executed. After sending the transaction, we get back a transaction hash. This is the order number of a transaction with which we can check its status. We start a listener for the transaction hash and when the transaction succeeds or fails, we update the UI to reflect the state. The user can then go back and see his transaction in the list of transactions. So after a while, uh, after a short amount of time, the transaction will get executed um, and Overall, we have a basic functional wallet that can read the state and send transactions on the Multiversix blockchain. So we took care of the basic setup and you can take this over and turn it into your uh, masterpiece. Right, so let's all walk over the architecture a bit so you know what's actually inside the code base. The setup of the project looks very similar to a web-based project because at its core, it's a JavaScript development environment with a touch of native code here and there, depending on the complexity of the app. You can actually build very complex React Native applications without ever touching the native part, or you can build simple React Native apps with a lot of native code. The possibilities are pretty endless in this game. So the SRC folder is the main JavaScript folders. Uh, it has components, which are simple UI components for um, actually rendering stuff. We don't have a lot of logic. Uh, constants and the design system, which we set up for you to use. Um, it has a theme that you can change to update the colors across the app. Uh, it has basic React hooks folder for usage across the app. And it has some types, utils, and services folder, which are pretty standard. The native module folders is actually where the things get interesting in React Native. This is where the JavaScript interacts with the native part. Um, in React Native, there is a class called native modules, which exposes the native modules that you um, created on the iOS or Android side. So you can import it here and use it um, across the across the app. The two, their nature, all such methods are a sync and have to be defined natively before they can be used in React Native. And the React Native folder, uh, the native modules folder we created here has an interface for the native modules that you can use in the app. So we use the native modules uh, for actually saving the private key and keeping it, well, private, encrypted, and in a secure storage. Um, we use this native modules approach because it enables better security and we can leverage Wallet Core. This is a library offered by Trust Wallet that is designed exactly to do this, manage the user's key and sign transactions and messages. So when the user enters their mnemonics on the login screen, we actually send them in a secure storage with wallet core, communicating with the native modules. And then we use those mnemonics to sign everything without ever exposing them to the JavaScript code. Right, so we also added a navigation uh, folder with navigation library, React Navigation, which you can use to cover all your navigation need. Uh, it's very powerful and it's better to ease, use. And the project has also a screens folder, which has all the screens that can be navigated to. You can expand those as you need. We also added um, a Redux folder so as a global state manager. We used the Redux toolkit. It's very easy to set up. And 
It comes uh, packaged with RTK Query, which is a very powerful library to uh, execute in cache API requests. But feel free to replace this with whichever you prefer, Mobix, Context, or um, anything you actually like. Um, all right, so be uh, besides the SRC folder, we also have Android and iOS folders. This is where the native logic um, is and from, from where it interacts with the uh, JavaScript code in the React Native app. So this is where you add all the native modules you need uh, along the way. Right, so this would be the broad overview of the project's architecture. And it's pretty basic. And besides blockchain interaction, it is a very simple flow for a React Native app. We won't dive deeper into the code because we neither have the time for this, nor would like to steal from you the joy of exploration. So building on the um, foundation is where creativity meets technology. Uh, while our boilerplate serves as a launch pad, actually the sky is the limit. Um, consider adding features like multi-currency support, real-time price tracking, or even staking options. And for those venturing into different industries, perhaps integrating supply chain tracking or real estate tokenization could be your next big thing. And real-world applications of our wallet templates abound. Exportal is the most prominent of them, even though Exportal is far more complex and has a lot more features than this uh, wallet, it was built with React Native starting from a very similar base. The wallet can be expanded to support a wide array of features and maintain a performance that borders on the native one. Other mobile projects that have successfully implemented the Multiversix blockchain include Sense for Fit, a fitness app, Cantina Royale, a mobile video game that has integrated the blockchain into the reward system, and a lot more. And from, from these implementations, we actually can draw a few important lessons. First, user experience is paramount. A wallet, though technical, should be user-friendly. You should never compromise on simplicity and ease of usage. Secondly, Security should never be an afterthought, especially in the blockchain space. Always prioritize it. And lastly, continuous updates are vital. The blockchain world evolves rapidly, and so should your application. And of course, your thoughts, queries, and concerns are very important to us. Whether you're curious about a piece of code, a design choice, how to implement something, whether on Multiverse or React Native, or the future of Multiverse 6, you can ask them at any time. And to further your journey, we've curated a list of books, articles, and online courses that delve deeper into React Native and Multiverse 6. You can join online communities like the Multiverse 6 Developer Forum or React Native Enthusiasts to work, network, learn, and grow. And we highly value your feedback. Uh, it helps us refine our sessions, ensuring we bring the most valid to enthusiasts like you. And today marks the beginning of a month-long innovation journey. Over the next 30 days, let's embrace challenges, collaborate across teams, and actually dream big. Remember, hackathons are as much about learning journey as they are about the final product. In the realms of blockchain and React Native, the potential is unlimited. And let challenges be your stepping stone. Seek out diverse perspectives and tap into the collective intelligence around you. Your ideas today could be tomorrow's breakthrough. And thank you for bringing your passion to this event. Let's shape the future one line of code at a time. Let the hacking begin.